today she's trying to work some magic selling an old toy. Last week I met Amanda McShane in Maidenhead, who has lovingly looked after her magic roundabout toy since her fourth birthday. She's decided to sell it before her own children get their hands on it and destroy it. I'm pretty sure that this would probably go to a dealer for about £350. Wow. Today I need to use my magic and trade in Dougal and friends for some hard cash and Amanda has come along for the ride. Good. Let's see if we can get as much cash as possible, shall okay. we? I've come to London's quirkiest antique market, Alfie's, where I think there could be a buyer. It's home to over 200 stalls ranging from 16th century furniture to dinky toys. It's the toys that I'm interested in. Hi Paul. How are you doing? How are you? Right. How are you today? We're okay. We've brought this along for you to have a look at. That's a big one, isn't it? You might be interested in <laughs> it. Yes. All right. Created by Frenchman Serge Danault in 1965, the Magic Roundabout ran for about 17 years on British television and was watched by millions of children. Dougal was reading the newspaper and getting rather agitated. And with rumours of a Hollywood film, the original toys could be in demand. So how many times do you come across something like this? You know, I mean with the box. OK, um, you see them, there's, there's one at every toy fair, mm -hmm. but there's always a bit missing. Yeah. There's always a bit of damage to it. So collectors especially, and dealers like myself, will be looking for damage and that affects the price. Usually the seesaw is broken, and I can see that this one has been broken, and somebody's trying to fix it with super glue, which is the worst <laughs> thing you can do, because then it goes off colour. Okay, <laughs> the set like this, you've always got to be aware of breakages, yeah. like this. I think and, there's um, a couple of trees that have got a few nicks out of Well, you know, the tree, these would be the things that, that get broken up and disappear yeah. off the fever. Yeah. What about the box? Okay. Because the box, I mean, uh, I've made a big thing about, you know, yeah. the fact that I thought it was very good that your mum hadn't been sticking it all back together <laughs> with cello tape and what right, have you. Yeah. How much difference are we talking about if it didn't have the box, for example? Suppose it was just in a plastic bag, okay, you know, yeah. with bits. In a plastic bag, I wouldn't be that interested, to be honest. The right. box is what would sell it to me. Right. And that goes all the way down the line to all TV and film-related toys. Would you be interested in buying this? I would be interested in buying this, but we'll have to do a bit of bargaining because simply there are a few broken bits that I'll have to go around the world to look to replace, like the bench. So what sort of price would you be prepared to offer Amanda for this? Um, well, I'm very tough. Uh, da -da -da -da. Yes, but he's got a heart of gold. I think I've got a heart uh, of gold, yeah, but I am a professional. 375, is it? 375. What do you think of that? Sounds good to me. And that's cash. Well, that's not bad for a toy that's been lying in the loft for the last 30 years. So how do you feel about leaving behind your childhood toy? Well, a little bit sad, but yeah. now I can buy something nice for my children. Yes, I was going to say, what's it like having all that money? Lovely. So are you pleased with the end result then? Fantastic. Thank yeah. you very much. Oh, that's yeah, right. You're marvellous. more than welcome. Got Thank to get you. you home now. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Why? She didn't even barter. She's it's like me. She accepts the first offer that comes along. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes you can't be cheesy, love. <laughs>